What is up my friends? My name is Kim and if you like true crime videos like I do, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I post two times a week and you don't want to miss a video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Today we are going to be talking about this Suzanne Morphew who went missing after she went on a bike ride. Suzanne Morphew vanished. The 49 year old went on a bike ride in Chafee County and never returned. There is some suspicious events that happened before she went missing. And most recently, the house that she shared with her family has been sold. Let's take a look at this case. Suzanne Morphew, on the day she went missing, was a stunning 49-year-old mother with two daughters Suzanne's family and her lived in a massive, beautiful home in Maysville, Colorado. They moved there in April of 2018. In the house, there was two grown daughters, Mallory and Macy, and her husband, Barry Morphew. They relocated from the Illinois area. Outside looking in at this family, they have the perfect life. They live in a beautiful home, they have a good marriage, they have amazing children. It is a picturesque life. Barry, her husband, is a very handsome 52-year-old man. He worked as a volunteer firefighter as well as running a landscaping business. I have not seen any news as far as money troubles, mistresses, affairs, any really known marital issues. Suzanne was described as a nice person with no known enemies. It's honestly a mystery of where Suzanne could have gone. On the day Suzanne went missing, it was Mother's Day of all days, which was Sunday, May 10th, 2020. The last person who saw Suzanne was her husband, Barry, on the morning of the 10th. Suzanne was active on social media until that evening at 9 p.m., which was the 9th, the day before she went missing. She was having a conversation with one of her friends, and then the conversation just stopped abruptly. But she was still active. She made a comment on someone's post, but then she was friending a couple of different people that were her brother's age, her brother's older than her, but she was friending some of his friends. They thought that it didn't read like something that Suzanne would do, her comment and the friends that she was requesting. Barry was leaving for a landscaping job, which would take him about two and a half to three hours. It was in Denver, Colorado. Barry had left at 5 a.m. in the morning on the 10th. He said Suzanne was still sleeping. Uh, the daughters, Mallory and Macy, were on a camping trip. So it was just Barry and Suzanne in the house over the weekend. And Barry was the last person to see her. Because it was Mother's Day, Mallory and Macy was trying to get a hold of Suzanne, most likely wanting to wish her a Mother's Day. But when they weren't getting any response from Susan, concerned, they called their dad, Barry, who then contacted the neighbor. He asked the neighbor if she could go over and just check to make sure everything's okay. The neighbor popped over, checked to see. She saw nothing out of the ordinary. Her car was in the driveway. There's no answer at the door, but nothing looks out of the ordinary. So she goes home and she calls Barry and says, everything looks fine, but she's not there. And Barry then asked her if she saw Suzanne's bike. The neighbor went back over to the house because she wasn't looking for a bike that was not on her mind. And the neighbor confirmed that her bike was not there. This is how this whole theory started that she went on a bike ride because her bike was missing and Barry initiated this theory. There was no sign of Suzanne. The neighbor concern actually was the one that reported her missing. It was just before 6 p.m. on the 10th when she reported her missing. The neighbor reported that she went on a bike ride and hasn't come back. I'm not sure the dynamics of why Barry didn't call to report her missing, but the only thing that I know is that the neighbor made the call. 
it might have just made more sense because the neighbor was there and Barry was driving back from this job he was at in Denver. So it doesn't make him guilty, but it just looks a little bit suspicious of why he didn't call. There was one woman in the media that uh, stated Barry could be having an affair with. Her name was Morgan Gentile. She being a landscaper who worked for Barry and his landscaping company. Morgan said the rumors about the possible affair between them were just absolutely false. Quote, I got treated through all this just like I'm the other woman, even though I'm not the other woman. I just happen to be a woman. <laughs> Morgan went on to tell Daily Mail, she quoted, that she was scared of Barry and claimed he was acting strange around the time that Suzanne went missing. She says that she never wants to see him again, ever. She also said Barry was acting really weird and seemed stressed. I was like, Barry, what's up? There was no response reported. They were working together the day before Suzanne went missing on a landscaping job. On this job, Morgan thought she was going to be working the entire day, but she was surprised when Barry ended the job at 11 a.m. She thought they were going to work all day. Morgan stated he said he had to go make his wife happy, do some hiking or biking. And I found out like later that day that he was in town all day shopping. She is definitely suspicious of Barry, needless to say, but I have to mention Morgan was fired by Barry. There wasn't a real reason why he fired her, but did state she only spoke out because she was mad for being fired. Morgan says she was fired because she spoke out. Who knows, there's a lot of he said, she said in this case. So last minute on the 10th, this is the day she went missing. A frantic Barry reportedly contacted Morgan again, hiring her once more, this time at the work site approximately 150 miles away, the job in Denver where Barry was at when, he, when she went missing. She agreed and a man by the name Jeff Puckett and her car pulled together to the project in Denver. Barry wasn't there when they arrived he had already found out the news about Suzanne. Barry claimed that he needed to attend to a family emergency, but he didn't elaborate to the two that were there, Morgan and Jeff. He said the tools and supplies were in Barry's room. He left him there to finish the project. Basically told him, you guys are on your own, figure this one out, I have a family emergency. So the two workers then checked into the motel that Barry requested them to go and Jeff and Morgan reported they found what they described as suspicious items. We opened the door and I mean like the cord hit you and you were like, my, my eyes started watering and burning and like the towels were like super wet on the floor and uh it, it looked like he had like made the bed before he left but it wasn't made by a hotel being chlorine drenched wet towels around the room the bed looked like it had been slept in but was made but not by the hotel it was made potentially by Barry. It wasn't folded like the hotel makes beds. You know how you just kind of throw your bedding over? That's what it looked like. Barry later told Fox 21 News that the chlorine was likely from the pool or other detergent the hotel used. I don't know if he went swimming. He never said he went swimming, but he said it's potentially from the pool. So did he go on a swim? I have no idea. I didn't see anything. Jeff also stated, I found some mail in the hotel. His mail was in the garbage in there. Jeff grabbed the mail out of the garbage and he gave it to the FBI. I thought it was kind of odd, Jeff said, that it was in there. Some of it was from an insurance company, like insuring your property, that kind of thing. I question whether this was suspicious or not, because if there was evidence in that room left by Barry, I don't think that he is going to give them that room. I would I would think that Barry had enough money that he would just get them their own room. So I find it 
a little bizarre. I'm not sure if I'm totally convinced that that meant anything. Suzanne was believed to have left on her bike the morning of Mother's Day. She had a regular routine that she would ride her bike before she went to church on Sundays. Her bike was abandoned and she had a personal item, which they're not releasing what that personal item was. Her bike was found on an off-road off of Highway 50. No one saw her that morning, nor saw her biking. The houses are not close together whatsoever, so it's not hard to believe that she went on a bike ride, but just wasn't seen in this low populated trail. Search and rescue teams looked through the night of the 10th into the 11th. They had tracking dogs, they had dive teams. There was no sign of Suzanne. And all these search efforts went on through the week, just amping up each day. Animal attack was on the table from the husband, Barry. He said this very early on. Because it's a very mountainous area, wildlife is plentiful. Where her bike was found, it didn't seem unreasonable, but this has been discredited by experts. Experts say this is not likely without leaving a trail behind the attack. It is believed that there would have been some kind of physical evidence that would be present on or around the attack, presumably where her bike was found. Things like clothes or blood, a carcass, would be in the area of her bike if this was the case of an animal attack. And none of that was found. None of that was present. Barry, who has offered, however, a $100,000 reward originally, but then a friend matched it, making it $200,000 for Suzanne's safe return. He previously theorized that his wife had been taken by a wild animal. Now he believes that she was abducted. Andrew Mormon is Suzanne's brother. He has really been aiding in the efforts to try to search and find Suzanne. He has organized search parties to look around the area of where her bike was found. And Lance, you spoke with her brother and he says they just want closure, right? He said that's what he and his family want. He says not knowing where his sister is is taking a toll on the family. So today he and several of the hundred or so volunteers who gathered here this morning focused their search on the area where his sister lived. I'm gonna go out by the Morphew home. Andrew Mormon instructing volunteers who gathered at the visitor center in Poncha Springs. We're looking for torn clothing human remains and things of that nature. Some of the volunteers went up to Dead Horse Gulch, others to Puma Path near Suzanne Morphew's home. That area was the focus of the investigation early on. The pink ribbon at the bottom. Morphew's bike was found at the bottom of this hill. Upside down leaning against the tree. But there was no blood or evidence of injury. He raised money to help to house and feed the search and rescue team. Although Barry, the husband, has funds available, he reportedly hasn't used it, nor would give it to Andrew either. There has been some tension between Barry and Andrew, the brother and the husband. Barry stated that Andrew and Suzanne were estranged, so he questions why he's even involved. If it's going to help bring Suzanne back, this is the time to put that behind them. So far, it looks like Andrew, Suzanne's mom, and our sisters are the people who are looking for her. But Barry's not alone. There are two grown daughters as well. His side of the family, quiet. We'd be out scouring the backyard every night. We'd be out climbing the walls and the mountains and the hills looking for our loved one. We'd be out searching. That's number one. Number two, if a television network calls you, you call back because you're desperate to keep your story in the press to help find your missing loved one. You're desperate to do anything to keep the media interested. And the last thing you typically do is say, no comment. It's crickets. They haven't really been doing much as far as what's been reported. They have a GoFundMe it switched names. It was in Barry's name, it was in Barry's mom's name. Now it's in one of the daughter's names, but it's going unused. 
there is not any evidence that any of them have any involvement whatsoever. But it's just worth noting. Andrew has said he thought it was Barry that he did something to her on the 9th and spent the 10th hiding and cleaning up. So of course Barry isn't going to want to work with Andrew because Andrew believes it was him. So it's a little convoluted. But why doesn't Barry or his children do something independently without Andrew is what I keep questioning and asking myself. Like, why doesn't he do something just on his own? He doesn't have to include anybody. I mean, searching for your missing wife and your mother is the only thing you can do to become one step closer to finding her or to get some kind of closure. Barry did release this video as a plea for Suzanne. The mother of two disappeared on Mother's Day. A neighbor told the sheriff Suzanne never came home from a bicycle ride. Now searches have located her bicycle and an unspecified personal item. Her husband Barry issued a plea today online. Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. No questions asked. However much they want, I will do whatever it takes to get you back. Honey, I love you. I want you back so bad. The video was short and sweet. He will not do any public interviews. The daughters have been silent as well. The last I heard, they hired their own independent lawyers. The police department has been so tight-lipped about this one. The husband states he has never been asked to do a polygraph. And then the brother states that he's refusing. Which is it? The police aren't saying. I have to say, if it was me, I would refuse to do a polygraph, in all honesty. They are too unreliable. Innocent or not innocent, they just are not reliable. But I would like to know if he's refusing or not, because there's two answers, depending on who you ask. I question Barry's involvement. There is no real evidence he was involved. Just some weird actions, and most likely they are easily explained. But no matter what he does or says, he is going to be thrown in the fire of the media. If he searches too much, he's guilty. Doesn't search at all, he's guilty. Does a plea, his words will be twisted, face analyzed for deception. Statistically, it's typically a husband or lover that was involved when it comes to a, cases like this. But it's not 100% of the time. When the statistics are so high that he is likely to do something, he is scrutinized either way, I don't envy his position unless, of course, he did it. The house was searched a couple times. Some evidence was taken from the house. Nothing is being reported on the items they seized. No person has been named as a person of interest. It is just a mystery. The latest news in this case is that the house they lived in, the anchor of Susan, was sold. The house was listed five months after she went missing and sold after 10 months. Reporters bombarded Barry asking why he sold the house and he said his daughters were scared to live in the house, that it could be the house she was abandoned from and they didn't want to be in the house any longer. It does sound like a plausible reason. It would make sense that they would be living in a constant fear and that is no way to live. And I would understand why they would want to move. But I get this icky feeling about it. It just seems you would want to stay in the house just in case she came back. That's what I go back to. I don't know how I would react, but it just seems like they would want to be there. It may be nothing. I can't tell if it's him abandoning horrible memories or possible events that took place, or if it's concern for his kids. Apparently, Barry got conservatorship awarded over Suzanne in Illinois, and then this was transferred over to Colorado. This is how Barry was able to sell the house without Suzanne. The media is ripping him a big one. What do you guys think? Is this weird, or is the media and I looking too much into this one? Let's talk theories. 
we'll just get the most obvious one out of the way. The husband did it. He killed her on the 9th and did some shuffling on the 10th as well as the cleanup. He took the bike to the location that it was found to get attention away from the home. It's possible, but in the end, I am really leaning towards Barry didn't have anything to do with her disappearance. I just don't know. I go back and forth. But in the end, I just cannot find that smoking gun motive. I understand that there doesn't need to be a motive, but it just doesn't make sense to me. The second one, she was abducted by somebody in the community. Somebody could have been stalking her and knew her routine. She was a beautiful and friendly woman. They saw her leave her house on her bike like she did every Sunday and waited until she was in an area that they could grab her. She could have just been a crime of opportunity. She was riding along when someone with ill intentions drove by and saw her alone on her bike with no one else around. A perfect storm then occurred without a trace. This and the abducted by somebody in the community are what I keep coming back to. I just feel like this is the most likely. You hear about all of these serial killers that just grab somebody and it's nobody that they knew or I don't know. I just want to keep an open mind. There's the theory that she wanted to go missing and she left her life and is living in Barbados or something, soaking up the sun <laughs> without the responsibility of being a wife or mother, just wanted to escape to start a new life. This theory is very unlikely. This doesn't fit her personality. From all that was reported, she was happily married and loved her kids and just wouldn't leave. Like she enjoyed those aspects of her life. So it's hard to believe. So this case remains a mystery. I am hanging on to the hope that Susan will come back unharmed, but as the days go by, this becomes more and more unlikely. I wish nothing but the best for the Morphew family. I hope they can move past a massive loss in their family and hold on to memories and what good they have left in their lives. That their new home will be filled with love and happiness. Well, if you guys made it to the end, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Captured Killers playlist if you want to check those out. Either way, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.